We were just talking about the energy transition and the government's role in it. Well, not specifically, but also for the renewable energy industry and important are rare earths. Now, one of Australia's best projects for neodominium and praseodominium, or NDPR as it's called, is an hour and a bit drive north of Alice Springs. The Nolans project is run by ASX-listed Arafura Resources, and it claims it could supply a significant proportion of the world's demand for these key metals. So what do they do? Well, think every time your phone vibrates or when you listen to your Bluetooth headphones or if you see a wind farm, the chances are that NDPR has created the magnetic capability for those to work. But that is only just the start. This week, the government committed up to $840 million to help build the mine and also a processing plant to add value to the ore. Our Northern Territory correspondent, Matt Cunningham, spoke with Arafura's chief executive, Daryl Kazubo, as the funding was announced. Firstly, um, the Commonwealth funding package announced today is really the cornerstone of our total funding solution. So it's substantial, it allows us to finalise discussion with other global banks and it sets us up to engage with investors for the, for the equity raise. But it's also very significant because it shows that Arafura is a key part of the Australian government's uh, critical mineral strategy. We will be producing a rare earth oxide, NDPR, that you cannot make electric vehicles and wind turbines without. And today, 90% of that supply comes from, from a country, and we can diversify that supply and play a key part in enabling Australia to, be, um, to help enable the energy transition. So just for a layman like me, Daryl, can you explain what, what exactly is NDPR? Yeah, good question. So NDPR stands for neodymium and praseodymium. And these are the rare earth elements that you need to make strong permanent magnets that are used in your phone, that are used in electric vehicles, wind turbines, robotics, etc. Uh, so how you, you've got this commitment, this funding commitment from uh, the federal government. How far are you away from reaching a final investment decision then and, and getting uh, actual work started there in Central Australia? Yeah, it's a good question. So just firstly, as soon as we've secured uh, the final financing, we're ready to go. So the site, you know, we've already spent over $100 million on the site, making sure that we are ready to go. Uh, what we need to do is finalise the debt package and uh, we're engaging with a number of global banks and today's announcement really helps us to finalise those discussions, uh, which we expect to happen in the, in the near term. That also sets the stage for us to engage with investors to raise the equity that we also need to finance this project. Now, how long that, that takes, you know, we think it will be in the order of some months, but obviously we're not in complete control of that. But we are eager to get construction underway, so we'll be pushing that as fast as we can. So by the end of this year, th the second quarter of the next financial year, you think that you know, there'll be work happening there and, and will be well and truly underway? Our plan is to, to secure the remaining financing this year and start, start construction. Now, how many jobs are we talking about here? Yeah, so there's the construction period, there's the uh, operational period, which runs for 38 years. So we're talking a multi-generational uh, mine life here. And the reality is it will be more than 38 years because we've only mapped out the mine plan to 200 metres, but we know the ore body goes to beyond 400 metres. So this is a massive ore body, and it will um, support jobs for, for many, many decades. If you look at um, the complete job set, so employees, contractors on site, as well as the local businesses off site that get jobs, we're talking over 1,000 people once we're in full state. A thousand people. So a thousand during construction, or an no? During construction, it will be in, it'll be in, uh, in the hundreds, um, but uh, the the thousand is when we're in stable, full production, which looks at the people on site, but also the jobs that are created in Alice and the Northern Territory. So both the direct and the indirect jobs. And we're talking not just about mining, we're talking about refining here as well. I mean, how important is that as part of what you're doing here? And, and will that give you a strategic advantage? Yeah, it's key. So this is fundamental to our strategy, which lines very well 
with the Australian government's critical mineral strategy. So the mine is actually a small part of the $1.7 billion investment. So if you were to go on site, you would see the vast majority is actually on this very large processing plant where we take the ore and we take it all the way to a oxide. And an oxide is, if you like, what is required to make the metal that goes into the, into the magnets and represents about 90-95% of the full, full value chain. So this is significant and it's the thing that makes Arafura unique because we will be the first mine to oxide producer uh, built wholly in, in Australia. So, which is obviously very much aligned to what the Australian government is trying to achieve to get the maximum economic contribution value add in this country. Well, Daryl, very exciting day for you and your company. Thanks so much for your time. My pleasure. Thanks, Matt.